Stephanie here from Oh You're Lovely and today's tutorial is one of the most requested tutorials. Once you kind of get into the solo wood flower world and you've dip dyed a whole bunch of flowers and maybe you tried your tried hand painting them, the next thing that people love to try but it's super intimidating is to use an airbrush. And so today's tutorial is all about beginner airbrush 101, all about solo flowers to create some amazing dimension and detail to your flower work that you've never gotten to do before. And bonus, for some of those flowers that are a little bit trickier and tend to uncurl when they're dip dyed, the airbrush will change your life. All right guys, let's jump into that tutorial. The items that you're going to need for this tutorial are an airbrush. This is Master Airbrush model S68. You kind of just start to learn which ones you like, but this is, has been my favorite for a little while now. Air compressor. We'll link to the air compressor I have in the comments below. You'll need some sort of air hose as well. For this tutorial, we're going to use craft acrylic paint. Now to use that with an airbrush, you're going to need an airbrush medium. This Liquitex is my preferred brand currently. To create the mixture, you're going to want a little medicine cup that is flexible, handy dandy popsicle stick for stirring, and then some Sola wood flowers. And then we'll go over cleaning real quickly to clean an airbrush. This is the airbrush cleaner I like, as well as I have a little pot to put all of the extra airbrush material in for cleaning. And teeny tiny little brushes to clean out the airbrush gun. So with this, what we are going to do is from with our hose, we're just going to screw that on to the bottom of our airbrush, okay? And what I like to do, and this just comes, I think, down to a personal preference. I take my little handy dandy cup and I scoot it over to the side. What we're gonna do, and we wanna take off this little cap, in here is where our needle is coming from. Um, before I turn this on, I'm just gonna show you when you push down, on this little lever. What that does is it starts to release the airflow of um, the air compressor. And when you pull the lever back, that is what moves the needle back. The further you pull it back, the more the needle goes back into the gun, which means more paint is gonna come out. So if you're in the middle, it's gonna be a much more um, thin, detailed line. Whereas when we're back here, it's gonna open up the spray a little bit more. I pre-plan all of kind of the color story that I'm gonna be working with that day. And I tend to just mix colors as we go and let them gradiate and fade into each other. If that is not for you, I will give you a tip of what you need to do to change colors so that you don't have um, harsh, like a color change. So I'm going to start with my light pink and then I'm going to do some detail with some uh, the darker pink. I am going to grab a little tissue here so I don't have paint going all over my workspace. And this is why I like these medicine cups that are flexible. We're just going to pour the paint into the top. Now I do put all of the flowers on a stem so that um, I don't get my hands full of paint because otherwise I will. So we're gonna push down, and you can see there's the air is moving that flower, and then we're gonna pull back. And when we pull back, 
that starts to let out. The further you hold out the flower from the paint, the um, lighter the paint color is going to be, the closer it's going to be a much more concentrated flow of paint hitting your petals. There is that in comparison. There you go. The dry time on the airbrushed flowers is like 100% faster than when we dip dye flowers. They're usually dry within seconds, if not minutes sometimes, if we put a ton of paint on them. All right, so here is the before of the blanche. And there's the after. Now it does open up just slightly because pretty much any sort of moisture when it hits these this style flower in particular uncurls but it just opened up just slightly still keeps that really soft beautiful uh, rose feeling without uncurling the petals so that they're standing at attention if you will that off you kind of just wiggle bring it down I'm gonna dump out this excess pink now, what you can do is if you want to switch over to another color and you don't want the colors blending into each other or kind of transitioning you can grab your um, airbrush cleaner put it in there and then run the excess through our little um, paint pot or on a piece of paper, get all of the excess, and you will notice when the, um, the piece of paper, for example, changes from that light pink to nothing. Um, and that means that it's clean and ready to go. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to try, let's see, how should we do this one? How about we just focus on the outer petals and leave the center of the light pink and we'll see how that goes. see the difference of playing with those two but for this one we are going to start working first way down in this center and we are going to try to focus real tightly onto this onto the petals and get some hot pink kind of going up through that So now 
in that center there's some pink and stuff, we're gonna cover that up with orange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump out this pink. And I'm gonna pop in some orange that I've already created. Knowing that that, I don't want uh, any more pink coming through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my piece of paper towel. already pre-dyed, dip-dyed flour and put some airbrush paint on top of it and see what happens. do is I'm going to focus right near the center and kind of put my paint right around here because I want to keep the yellows at the ends. We'll see. We'll see if I can do it. So much fun. All right, so now we're done. So let's go clean our airbrush. The first thing that I do is I dump out any of the excess paint. Um, you can store it for a little while in like a glass jar or something like that. But what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our airbrush cleaner. Um, I prefer to use an airbrush cleaner and not something like Windex. It's really, really up to you. Um, the important thing about an airbrush gun though is to clean it. If you don't clean it shortly after you're using it, uh, the next time you pull it out to work with it, uh, there's a good chance it's going to clog. So I'm just grabbing some of the, just a little bit left of the paint at the bottom with my paper towel, get a little bit more of that out. Um, there is paint that's like up there in that spot. Um, I don't normally try to get that out. It's going to come out with the airbrush cleaner. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fill the little reservoir with our airbrush cleaner. Pop that in. Now I use, I don't know what this technically is called, but I'll make sure that there's a link to it. Um, basically the airbrush goes into here, all of the excess like cleaning fluids goes into the bottom of that and then you clean that out. You can also do this with just a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard and you're going to just clear, like keep running it until it's clear. there's um, paint in there this comes off you just screw that off we're not going to take this entire thing apart um, there's some great tutorials on how to take your full airbrush apart but we're not going to do that today but what we are going to do is take off this piece and we're going to clean that to make sure that there's no paint gooped stuck in there Take the little brush and I'm going to pull through there, get all the other excess paint off. Then you can turn off your air compressor, take off the hose, put it away, and you're set for another day. 
Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope it answered most, if not all, of the questions that you might have with airbrushing, and I hope you give it a go. It's not the most affordable tool, as in like 50 cent acrylic paint and a brush, but it is one of those tools that once you start playing with it, it's gonna change your life forever, especially if you love to make more detailed or realistic looking solo wood flowers. Now the one thing I did wanna note that I did completely space talking about during the video itself is that you do not have to use acrylic paint with the airbrush medium. There are a few other types of paint you can use with the airbrush that is gonna work just fine. Now I would not recommend using latex paint, that's just my personal preference. If it works for you, that's wonderful. I have never tried it and I probably never will. Um, with that being said, the other two types of dye that you can use in your airbrush that work really well that I've tried out and tested is this particular paint from Golden is called High Flow. It already has that medium mixed into the color. It's super pigmented. Uh, it has that really great consistency to go through the airbrush without it clogging up. The one thing to note about High Flow is it comes in most of the just standard artist colors. So your blues, reds, greens, it's not a huge shade where you can get with acrylic craft paint where you can get any shade basically under the rainbow. It has your basics and then you want to mix the colors to create what you want. So if you go this route, I definitely recommend getting a much bigger bottle of white and black so that you can mix your different colors. But the vibrancy on these cannot be beat. The other thing you can use is actually for what is used on cookies for airbrushing. Uh, this particular one I got from the Cookie Countess, which by the way, they have some great airbrush tutorial YouTube videos as well. If you wanna check them out, they do sell an airbrush for cookie art. Um, it's a very similar type of airbrush as what I showed today. Uh, and these are, they're, they're great. They're all kind of more of a watercolor type look, but you do not need to air, add that airbrush medium to it either. It's a thin consistency that runs through the, your airbrush with no problem. So if you have any questions, have you tried airbrushing? I'd love to know about that. Drop that in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. And if there's any other videos that you would love to see that are much more on the technical side or trying out a different technique, let us know as well. We love making these videos, but we wanna make sure we're making videos that you love watching as well. Speaking of which, if you love what we're doing around here, make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell so you get notifications every time a new video has been posted. And to find out more about the 100 plus solo wood flowers we carry in our shop, go to oyourlovely.com. Until next time, this is Stephanie from Oh Your Lovely, and you, my friends, are absolutely lovely. Bye, guys.